June is Alzheimer's and Brain Awareness Month, and researchers say African Americans are more likely than Caucasians to suffer with the disease. There are some local services available to help your loved ones. We have Janet LeClaire, the Chief Operating Officer at the Ivy, to tell us more, and Celeste Bagley right next to me, talking about her experience being a caregiver for her mother. Ladies, thanks for being here tonight. We appreciate you. Well, thank you for thank having you. us. All right. uh, first, Janet, I'll start with you. Why is it important for African Americans to know about Alzheimer's symptoms and and services in Charlotte? Mm -hmm. No, great question. Um, African Americans actually have um, a twice the number, the uh, rate of incidence of Alzheimer's than other populations, largely um, due to vascular issues, uh, higher incidence of diabetes, circulatory issues, and, and health issues. So it's really important that uh, African Americans and all um, populations really get early detection, early health um, uh, insights to um, try to prevent and to delay the incidence. Okay, well, uh, Janet, tell us more about the IV and what mm -hmm. does it offer to caregivers. Yep. The IV is um, Charlotte's only memory wellness day center, and it is um, uh, strictly um, focused on individuals with Alzheimer's and memory impairment. Uh, we provide a very comprehensive set of services, um, on-site health care monitoring, uh, stimulating and therapeutic activities, including on-site um, rehabilitation services. Uh, we have an art therapist, a music therapist on staff. We really focus on socialization, on really providing a warm, welcoming um, environment to really, um, really provide, uh, you know, a, a highly social environment for our members. Mm -hmm. Can you give a little bit of insight into the activities that you do? Sure, with? absolutely. Um, we have programming that is um, geared toward those in the early early stages of Alzheimer's as well as in the moderate stages. That can include um, art therapy, we have Meet Me at the MoMA program, we have a partnership with the Beckler Museum, come on site um, and uh, help us with, with our art uh, programming. We have a music therapist on staff, we have a relationship with Queens University mm -hmm. and we provide um, students come over and provide therapeutic uh, programming to our members. Additionally, we have a senior scholars program that's geared toward our mild cognitive impaired population. So a lot of intellectual stimulation, a lot of focus on really keeping that learning uh, momentum going. Okay, uh, you want to mention any professionals that make up your team? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, we are um, blessed to have um, Lynn Ivey, our CEO and founder, um, who through her personal experience founded the Ivy about 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, we have Lisa Grodi, who is our RN, um, been with us for a number of years, and she monitors health, health and wellness. Um, we also have um, uh, our music therapist, a whole set of care partners, and um, uh, marketing director Vicki Hunley, um, just uh, really a great team. Sounds like a good group. Okay. Uh, well, Celeste, I'm going to bring you in, if you will. Uh, you have a personal connection to this. Uh, we'd like to hear a little bit more about your story with your mother. Okay. Uh, my mother is 93, mm. almost 94, and she has been living with me for the past 19 years. Okay. And about 10 years ago, I noticed that she had declining short-term memory. And I, we were in Arlington, Virginia at the time, and I enrolled her in an adult daycare program for people with disabilities. I started getting calls from the program that my mother was using profanity, my mother was paranoid, and I observed she also was started to wander from our home. And the staff at that program told me, if this keeps up, you're going to have to put your mother in assisted living right. within the next year. But thankfully, most of those symptoms, they just went away. But her short-term memory continued to worsen. Right. In fact, now, sometimes, she does not recognize that I'm her daughter. I'm just the nice lady who takes care of her. Got you. Okay. And uh, now, how are you going about trying to fix this, or how are you working with this? Mm -hmm. Well, we moved down here about five years ago. And my mother started attending the Ivy. And it's really a wonderful place, primarily for the socialization. She doesn't have to keep up with the other 60 people there because they're all at the same level. Right. And when I pick up my mother in the afternoon and I say, did you have a good time? She says to me, I always have a good time here. Yes, uh, that's good to hear. Now, uh, uh, quickly, ladies, uh, why do you consider adult day centers to be valuable for families dealing with an Alzheimer's diagnosis? I kind of kind of know what you're saying. Cause what you, mm -hmm. Why do you think it, Jen? Well, first of all, it provides a, as Celeste said, a 
warm social environment so people really feel they are alive and they have a sense of community. Um, it also is significantly less expensive than in-home in care as well as um, placement and long-term care models. So it really enables families to not only um, allow their loved one to age in place at home, it also gives their loved ones the opportunity to work, to gain respite, to really have peace of mind because they know their loved one is being cared in a warm and nurturing environment. And they can do it with respect as well. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Ladies, thank you so much. I really appreciate you, Celeste, sharing your story. Mm -hmm. Welcome. We appreciate you and uh, continued success with the organization. Uh, for more information on the IV, log on to WBTV.com. Look in the web extra section right there on the home page. Once again, ladies, thanks for being here. We appreciate Great. you. Thank you for thank having you. us. Yes. Time to get back to our sound off, Charlotte. New York